Good morning. My name is Anna Howe, and I'm the Applied Technology Manager at Evonik Corporation, located in Richmond, Virginia. I want to thank EcoWell for allowing me to speak to you today on sustainability. In today's seminar, I will take you on a journey that will focus on identifying sustainable ingredients and how to, you can use these ingredients to impact your formulation designs to meet and even surpass the targets of today's sophisticated eco-warrior. Looking at cosmetic products from cradle to grave, we may ask ourselves, how can we influence the life cycle of commercial products so that we can minimize or even reduce their environmental impacts? In my talk, I will focus on three critical areas. The first, the role of the supplier and our contribution with the selection of natural raw material feedstocks and ingredient manufacturing processes. Second, your approach as a finished goods company with formulation composition, chassis design, and production techniques. And finally, how we can inspire consumers with targeted application properties and how these products support consumers' sustainable lifestyle goals. What's changing in the world? Today's consumers are increasingly aware and continue to demand sustainable solutions in various industries, including the personal care industry. Avonix sustainability ambition places sustainability at the center of everything we do. This supports the future of tomorrow as marketed products are fulfilling consumer needs by bottling ingredients that minimize their environmental footprint. Let's do this together. What do we see in the market? Let's take a close look. We all recognize natural and sustainable are the future of beauty and personal care. We see in the market that consumers care about what's in their product and how it impacts the environment. So brands are giving consumers a reason to purchase by developing the next generation products to meet those consumer demands. We see this with emerging brands like indie beauty brands and vegan brands serving these changing consumer needs. Let's look at the size and growth of the global natural and organic personal care industry. In 2020, this market was at 7 billion in size. And looking seven years out, this segment is expected to grow just under 24 billion. This is a 9.3 compound annual growth rate. The projected growth of the natural and organic market is due to the manufacturer's response to the consumer demands. The conscious beauty consumer is aware of ingredients and their benefits in their daily products through social media and their online influencers. Listening to the consumer the demand for brands to focus more on environmental benefits are now. In the U.S., we see 42% of consumers are willing to pay more for natural or organic products. 80% of Gen Z globally feel that companies should help the environment. We see natural-focused finished good houses committing to develop formulas which have lower environmental footprints. Avonik has committed to achieving 50% carbon neutral operations by 2025, with an additional goal to be 100% carbon neutral by the year 2050. The raw material supplier, finished good houses, and the consumer are focusing on sustainability. We all recognize that this needs to be a global effort. On this slide, I am showing example criteria for improving the eco profile of your finished products that supports the consumer's sustainable lifestyle goals. The first pillar focuses on the supplier's role to provide renewable feedstocks with transparent traceability 
and utilizing production processes that lower the CO2 environmental footprint. The second pillar is leveraging how finished good houses can lower their energy consumption with state-of-the-art ingredients that require lower processing temperatures or even can be processed at room temperature. This pillar also focuses on chassis designs that are developed with multifunctional ingredients that support minimalistic trends or create or creating traditional personal care products in a waterless form. The last pillar is communicating key application attributes to the conscious beauty. Lower water consumption, rinseless products, no or reduced packaging components that reduce the burden on the landfills, or products that are developed for both men and women that have multi-purpose uses. Now I'd like to share Avonik's contribution to creating sustainable products from cradle to gate. The next slides we will examine raw materials in combination with unique eco-efficient processes that can create meaningful environmental benefits for your final formulation. Let's look at the topic of cultivation of renewable feedstocks. The most important sources for our raw materials are plant oils. Here you see a comparison of palm kernel oil and palm oil and their global warming potential. Global warming is measured in CO2 equivalents per kilogram of oil. I want to point out a couple of important facts looking at this chart. If we look specifically into palm oil, we see that moving from non-responsibly source to responsibly source quality has a significant impact on the global warming potential. There is a 78% decrease in CO2 equivalents for palm oil. Looking at the palm kernel oil, we see a similar trend with a 73% decrease when switched to responsibly source grade. Now we know that land needed to cultivate palm oil is very low compared to other seed oils, making responsibly sourced palm oil a sustainable feedstock, very attractive for production going into the future. Now I wanna point out also that these figures do include biogenic carbon and land use changes. And this is um, calculated on a 20 year cycle. Now I'd like to compare the esterification manufacturing processes. This slide shows a comparison of conventional esterification and enzymatic catalysis on a five ton scale. At first glance, we see that conventional methods employ higher temperatures, 180 Celsius versus 60 Celsius, and has many additional steps to produce the finished product such as de deodorization, bleaching, drying, and filtering. These additional steps have higher impact on the carbon footprint and adversely affects the life cycle assessment. Enzymatic production has great environmental quality and process advantages. Let's take a closer look at the impact that raw material processing and energy sources have on CO2 equivalents. The first gray bar is showing a conventional process of maristal maristate mass balance using a standard energy grid mix, which is 80% natural gas and 20% green electricity. The next bar is showing the same product and energy mix, but with enzymatic process. This shows a 66% decrease in CO2 equivalents. The last bar is showing the same product and enzymatic processing, but with the addition of using hydropower to produce 100% of our electrical needs. Avonik is currently producing its own energy in the Duisburg facility to produce sustainable emollients. 
This eco-efficient process running on renewable energy leads to an improved impact on global warming by 100% lower CO2 footprint compared to conventional chemical production. Let's look at the effect of combining the manufacturing process and the raw material sourcing has on the life cycle assessment. The first bar shows an additive effect of conventional processing with the non-RSPO certified feedstock. The second bar represents enzymatic processing with responsibly sourced palm. I want to emphasize that combining incremental influencing factors like processing techniques and feedstock we can impact the overall life cycle assessment in a meaningful way. In this example, we achieved a 68% lower CO2 footprint. Now I'd like to share that the LCA improvement of other enzymatic emollient within the Avonic portfolio. This slide shows six enzymatically derived emollients. And in each case, we see that switching from metal catalysis to enzymatic catalysis has a positive influence on the overall life cycle assessment. Let's look at the individual results. Oleolarucate, we obtained 147% decrease in CO2 equivalents. For decyl cocoate, we achieved 136% decrease. Isolamyl cocoate, 84% decrease. Isyl amyl laurate, 37. And finally, acetyl ricinoleate, we achieved 103% decrease. Let's look at the environmental impact of a typical oil and water cream example. On the left hand side, you see we have a natural oil and water cream which has a natural origin index of 100%. It contains an emulsifier, Dermaphil NC, consistency enhancers, GMS, fatty alcohol. It also contains emollients, sensory additives, water, glycerin, and xanthan gum for thickening. If we were to make this formulation with conventional esters, we would have a higher environmental impact. But if we were to exchange the emollient mixture which is 18% of the formula with the vonic enzymatic esters, we could decrease the overall CO2 level. Let's look at the environmental impact cradle to gate by making this exchange. On the left-hand side, you see a compositional representation of the oil and water cream that I showed you on the previous slide. The weight percent of each ingredient is represented in the bar chart. The largest impact on CO2 footprint is contributed by the emollient selection in orange. The emollients, which are only 18% of the formulation, contribute approximately 80% of the CO2 footprint. So let's see how we can optimize the sustainability of this emulsion using renewable feedstocks and eco-efficient production. This slide compares three scenarios in respect to raw material choices and manufacturing processes. As shown earlier, the esters have the largest environmental impact, so our focus will be on optimizing this group of ingredients. The first bar shows the impact of esters made with non-RSPO raw materials and conventional production. The second bar shows the improvement of the life cycle assessment if we were to use esters that are made with RSPO palm and conventional processing. This change produced a 47% reduction in CO2 footprint. The third bar shows further environmental impact improvement by combining RSPO palm with enzymatic processing. By changing to a vonic enzymatic emollient in the oil and water formulation, we can achieve a 67% lower CO2 footprint. These choices produce meaningful environmental benefits. 
The next slide, we will examine how you can formulate sustainable formulas that resonate with the conscious beauty consumer. One approach to improve the sustainability in skincare products is to re-examine the chassis design. A typical emulsion has a water phase of 70 to 80 percent, so cosmetics has a huge dependence on water in their final product. In manufacturing, there is also additional water that is used for production and cleaning. This water is referred to as virtual water since it does not end up in the final product. Water is a precious resource. In the next few slides, I wanna show you how you can formulate water-free. Going water-free has many sustainable benefits, such as lower micro-contamination, reducing or eliminating packaging that ends up in landfills. Conserving water is a global initiative. In the US, 61% of consumers would like to see companies improve their green practices and support green organizations. Our neighbors to the north, we see that 66% of consumers would like to see more innovation on sustainability from big beauty brands. Finally, in Japan, we see that consumers are implementing water saving techniques in their home. The first system that I'd like to go through is our Happy Hands Bar. As you can see, this is a water-free system. Looking at the some of the key ingredients, first of all, we have our natural seed oils, and then we adjust the sensory using our enzymatic emollients, take us off to OER, DC, and CR. This system is a solid. Uh, what is texturizing this particular system is our Dermafil Viscolid. Um, and then finally, um, we want to address barrier repair. So here we've, we've incorporated our Body Flux Olive, which is a natural ceramide three. You can see looking under the remarks, um, we've calculated the natural content as well as the natural origin content for each of the systems. Our second water-free example is called Beachy Body Butter Bar. Here you see again, we are using uh, a composition that contains natural seed oils as well as our emollients from our natural portfolio. Again, we're texturizing this particular system with our Dermafil Viscolid. Now I wanna bring your attention, uh, in this system we have chosen two hero ingredients, again, the body flux olive, uh, ceramide three, but we also have our tegosterol KCS. And this is a skin identical cholesterol derivative. It is naturally found in the extracellular lipid matrix and it helps to reinforce the natural skin barrier. Now I'd like to share our sensory panel results that we ran comparing the Beachy Body Butter Bar against a marketed product that was also water-free. Now looking at the spider chart, we look at initial and five minute results. Where we were able to find some key differentiation was in the waxiness, the stickiness, and finally the silky velvetiness. Now, I think it's logical when going from a traditional uh, emulsion to a solid format that you would have concerns over the application being waxy and how that is applied to the skin. I want to bring your attention to our Cetyl Ricinoleate, which is our Tegasoft CR. This has a transitional melt point very close to body temperature. And this is a very special ingredient that helps us to overcome this waxiness um, and reduce the stickiness, but increase the overall silky velvetiness of the system. So this material is really helping us to make a very elegant system in a water-free format.
The last area that I will cover today is how we can inspire and support the conscious beauty consumer in living more sustainably. In this section, I will identify strategies that can lower or eliminate the in-home water consumption. We will also look at identifying multifunctional ingredients that can be used to create minimalistic systems that have excellent performance. In this section, we will also look at formulations that can be used for multiple purposes to simplify regimen for both men and women consumers. The first system I'd like to highlight is called our Ultimate Trouble-Free Smooth Cream. If you look at the composition, we have a traditional water phase which contains glycerin for freeze-thaw stability. We have chelating agent to help the overall uh, product protection, and we have our natural thickeners. In the oil phase, we have a combination of our emulsifier, which is an emulsion concentrate because it's the emulsifier, the consistency enhancer, and a wetting agent. We have our enzymatic catalyzed emollients along with some natural seed oils and some uh, to cough raw for overall protection of the natural oils. Finally, we have our preservation um, pack, which is the Derma Organics 1388. Now I'd like to take you through and examine a little more closely how certain key ingredients really support the conscious beauty consumer. Here you see the ultimate trouble-free smooth cream system. What I have done is I've highlighted several ingredients that help the overall eco profile of the system. I've chosen one from the supplier, one for the finished good house, and finally one for the conscious beauty consumer. Now I wanna bring your attention first to the uh, green, Highlighted materials, these all utilize responsibly sourced palm, which we saw earlier is a key feature of lowering the overall life cycle assessment. The next material in orange is our emulsifier, Symbiomols GC. Now this, as I said earlier, is a concentrate because it contains glycerol stearate citrate, the sacerol alcohol, and then the wetting agent, the glycerol caprolate. Now, normally emulsions are processed at 80 Celsius, very common temperature. This particular system, because it utilizes the Symbiomols GC, is processed at a much lower temperature. It is processed at 60 Celsius. So this is a, a very a uh, good strategy for finished good houses to have an additional um, life cycle assessment lowering using this material. Finally, uh, because of the composition and the sensorial profiles of this system, we can use this not only on the hands and body, but it is also perfectly suited for the face. So again, this product can maybe replace many uh, products in the regiment and is perfect for all consumers. This slide shows the sensory panel results for the ultimate trouble-free smooth cream. You can see starting off with the spreadability that it has a very high spreadability. This is coming from the Symbiomoles GC, which really provides a very caring skin feel with a light protection film. Now this material also has a low whitening, and I think two ingredients that are, are responsible for this would be the Dermafil Sensolve and the Tegasoft OER. Both of these emollients really help with reducing whitening and can replace those synthetic materials that are typically used for that uh, property. 
Now looking at uh, the waxiness and the stickiness, you see that both of these are quite low, uh, which uh, makes it really perfect uh, for men and women. And this, this particular system has excellent moisturizing and softening properties. So not only is it good for men and women, but it is good for, for um, the face, the hands, and, and the body. The second example that I'd like to share with you is our Caretainable Caring Water and Oil Fluid. Now this system utilizes Isolan 17, which is a natural water and oil emulsifier. You see it's used at 5%. I've also chosen key emollients that will help with the overall sensory, as well as uh, to help the overall emulsion stability. Here we also have natural seed oils, and so then we have tocopherol to protect that. And then we also have a wetting aid, which is used for product protection, which is our Dermasoft GMC. Now in our water phase, um, we have our traditional ingredients, glycerin. And here we're using zinc sulfate uh, heptahydrate. Now this um, polyvalent salts are commonly used with water and oil emulsifiers, but this one has a dual function, uh, not only to help inhibit Oswald ripening, but it is also used as a strategy for overall product protection. So now what I'd like to do is, is highlight some key ingredients that really bring the eco profile to life. I'd now like to focus on some key ingredients that, that allow a very positive uh, eco profile for this water and oil fluid. The first being the emollients. Uh, these products are highlighted in green. And as we spoke about earlier, these use um, an eco-friendly production process along with responsibly source feedstocks. And this particular combination really allows for a reduced environmental footprint. Now these materials also um, can be used to change the overall sensory. So again, emollients are, are key in formulating. The next material that I'd like to focus on is our emulsifier, the Isolan 17. Now this is a liquid emulsifier, so it allows for cold, cold processing. So again, an additional area for energy savings. Now looking at this fluid, we can look at it at many different angles. Um, first, it's very effective skin protectant and we can protect the skin from environmental triggers such as low humidity or pollution. Um, this fluid is also very easy to apply um, to the face, hands, and feet, and is perfect not only for adults, but also because of its mildness, um, is perfect for baby's sensitive skin. On an earlier slide, I showed an oil and water cream composition that contained an emulsifier, emollients, uh, water, sensory aids, um, and uh, consistency enhancers. Now, looking at that composition, we saw that the emollients contributed the largest percentage to the CO2 um, equivalents. Now, what I wanted to do was to show you uh, the effect of a different chassis design. In this particular example, we are going to utilize the water and oil fluid that we discussed on the previous page. So looking at the bar charts, the first bar chart on the far left is a weight percent representation of that system. 
So you have the water phase, the emollients, uh, stabilizers, and the emulsifier. Again, looking at this, we see that the emollients are the largest contributor to the overall CO2 equivalents. Now, the water and oil fluid composition had a larger emollient loading. It was 24%. So this means that the footprint um, is even larger. Now, by changing to avonic enzymatic emollients in the final formulation, we can obtain an improved impact on global warming by lowering the CO2 footprint compared to using conventional metal catalysis emollients. I hope you enjoyed our journey on minimizing the environmental footprint of a cosmetic product. In the presentation, we have discussed how we can influence the profile of the cosmetic product to achieve a holistic sustainability. We start with the full transparency on raw materials with suppliers. We then discussed how product positioning from the beginning is important in delivering a sustainable product by identifying chassis designs and manufacturing processes. Finally, we need to clearly communicate product profiles to consumers to motivate them to take part and contribute to our sustainable future. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed my talk. If you would like to learn more about Ivonic's sustainability program, I encourage you all to visit our website, intobeauty.evonic.com. Thanks and have a great day. Ivonic, leading beyond chemistry.